All right, so in this video, I'm going to cover a few general concepts for the horizontal stack. Uh, the setup looks like this. You have four cutters and you have three handlers. The cutters give this offense its name because they're stacked up horizontally across the field. This makes sure that every cutter could potentially make a cut towards the disc or a cut deep. It also leaves a whole lot of space open for deep cuts. So notice that the two handlers who don't have the disc are not quite stacked up horizontally. They line up a little behind the thrower so that they'll be able to make cuts up or across the field and still end up in a good position after the catch. If they were to line up horizontally with the thrower, then they'd pretty much either have the option to cut backwards, which is just plain losing ground, or cut forward into the space where the cutters are already making their cuts. So it's best to line up a little behind the thrower. So let's add some defense real quick. Uh, okay, depending on which direction the defense is forcing the thrower, which is defined by the marker, uh, that, that tells you which side is going to be more open. So in general, we talk about two sides of the field if the defense is forcing, which is almost always the case. We have the open side, which is the side that the guy who's marking the thrower is not blocking. And then we have the break side, which is the side the marker is blocking. If you can throw it to the break side, the defense might not be ready, but the open side is usually pretty easy to work with as far as the thrower is concerned. So now that we have these general ideas down, let's talk about how the offense actually works. Uh, when we run the host stack, sometimes we need to be able to communicate with each other about who's cutting first. To do this without letting the defense know, we would pick a four-letter word like, say, epic. Uh, then from the perspective of the person with the disc, the cutter farthest to the left is E, then the person to the right of them is P, then we have I, and then C, farthest to the right. Uh, in addition, you have to be able to describe where people should be cutting. To do this, we use three numbers. One, which is cutting into the short space on the open side. Two, which is cutting into the deep space on the open side. And three, which is cutting into the short space on the break side. So if we have like a dead disc or something and we need to set up a play, we might say P1, I2. And, and what that means is that when the play starts, player P will cut to the open side while player I will cut to the deep space. And then play goes on from there. So let's say the thrower makes a pass to P after the cut. Uh, I and C might see opportunities to beat their defender in a quick follow-up cut. And if those cuts work, more opportunities might show up and you may never see host stack again until we've scored the disc. That's fine. Uh, just go with the flow and whatever you do, don't just stand around behind the disc watching everybody else do stuff. Uh, on the other hand, if P gets the disc and nothing works out with the continuation cuts, uh, then P becomes one of the handlers, which means that one of the handlers will need to cut out and become a cutter. So the, the handler would yell out and let the other handlers know that they don't need to leave and then P becomes one of the handlers uh, so then after that everybody slowly migrates back into the host stack uh, lastly we need to talk about the most important part of the host stack which is being one of the handlers uh, as you saw the handlers are not always just the same three people everyone could end up rotating into being a handler depending on how the play ends up going so it's important that everybody understands what they do when you have the disc and you get to a certain stall count, uh, even if you are a handler, then uh, usually, you know, stall four, stall five, then you need to start initiating a reset cut, maybe around stall six. Uh, so when you're initiating a reset cut, you need to do this by turning around and looking at one of the handlers. Don't just kind of like glance around for a second, uh, go, turning the side of your head. You need to like pivot all the way around and face the handler. Right, so at this point the handler has one or two options. The handler can cut up the line or uh, cut back down across behind the thrower, uh, depending on what's open and what's working best. Uh, so getting the upline throw is great because it gives you a chance to make a quick throw on the open side before your defender catches up to block you. Uh, but at the same time, the throw across behind the thrower is also good because even though you're not in as good a position and you're kind of backwards a little you have the opportunity to attack on the break side where the defense isn't quite as ready uh, so notice that if the primary handler the one on the open side makes a cut across the field behind the thrower the other handler needs to clear out 
uh, by cutting in front of the thrower. So this doubles as an opportunity to get a quick reset on the open side if the, the other cut didn't work. Uh, of course, if none of that is open, then sometimes you just have to throw an emergency pass to whatever is open. Uh, just don't wait until stall eight uh, until you start this whole process because then you'll run out of time and you'll have to do the emergency pass first. Uh, so the most important thing if you're stuck on the sideline is to get off the sideline as fast as possible. Uh, right. So right here we have somebody stuck on the sideline. Don't wait until stall seven and then start looking for a pass to the middle when you're on the sideline. Take it as soon as you can if there's nothing available. So, you know, as you see right here, the handlers are lined up almost horizontally, but this time the middle handler is a little back. Uh, the far handler is going to mirror everything the middle handler does. Uh, so the first thing that's going to happen is if uh, this dump pass right towards the center is wide open, then just take that. Right? But if that's not open, then the thrower needs to fake fake to the, the middle handler, and that'll let the handler know, I need to get out of the way because this isn't open. Right, So this middle handler cuts down the line, and perhaps that's open. If that's open, definitely take it because that's a great position to be in, uh, beating your defender forward. And uh, so... You know, there's the first two options for that person on the side. If that's still not open, then we want the far handler to come in. And so, like I said before, the far handler's been mirroring this whole time. So the middle handler cuts back, and the far handler cuts forward a little. And so then the middle handler cuts forward. This is when the far handler cuts back. Uh, and that works out the timing so that if option number two is not available, option number three is immediately available after that All right so with this sort of play you should be able to get the the disc off the sideline and set the host stack back up move it down the field All right so yeah that's all the host stack that you really need to know uh, it's pretty cool stuff uh, and yeah